All right, join me today. We are shooting some volleyball. All right, guys, today we're talking about six-man volleyball, what I consider one of the hardest sports to photograph. And why is it so difficult to photograph? Because the whole object of the game is to fool the opponent as to where the ball is gonna go next. And that ball moves pretty quick. It's hard to figure out what person is actually gonna be touching that ball next, which makes it very difficult to key in on where you're supposed to be shooting at. So today I'm gonna to give you a few tips and tricks based on my own experiences. We're gonna talk about gear and strategy and positioning. All right, next let's talk about what everybody already gravitates to and that is gear. Fortunately, the price of entry into indoor sports is relatively low compared to say field sports where you have those big long telephoto lenses which are very expensive. I recommend a 70 to 200 f2.8. This is, happens to be a Nikon model. All the major manufacturers make lenses in this general area, 70 to 200. But it's very important that it's an f2.8 for reasons I'll talk about in a little bit. Now, you could go a little outside the box besides that 7200 and pull out, you know, one of the big super telephotos. 300, 400. Now, this 400 is a little overkill for inside a high school gymnasium. I get that. And believe me, when I use it, I usually have to sit at the top of the stands pointing down. But that's okay, it gives a different perspective. I used to have a 300 to 8, and that was about perfect from the stands. Again, think about it in volleyball, they're often looking up. If you're up in the stands pointing down, perfect opportunity to get that face. You can also use wide angle lens. This is a uh, 24 to 70. I use these during warm ups when I can get a lot closer to them. It's also if you happen to be near their bench, you can get up close and you can get some more wide angle, uh, more artsy type photos. But in general, that 7200 is pretty much everything you need to shoot volleyball. Now, as far as cameras, you just need a camera that's capable of auto focusing in a continuous manner. It's a decent frame rate, I'd say five or higher, because you want to try to catch that action as much as possible. And it can handle higher ISOs. I commonly run into ISOs in gymnasiums of at least 4,000. That's like a good gymnasium, but often they're higher than that, eight, 10,000. So if your camera can't handle that, you're gonna be struggling a little bit. So that's the kind of camera I would be looking for in whatever brand you choose. Now, speaking of ISO, let's talk about some settings. So settings are crucial when it comes to photographing indoor sports. Most of us are gonna be photographing in gymnasiums that are not very well lit. Now, if you watch any of my previous videos, I, I go through what I consider the minimum standards for sports photography. Shutter speed, one one thousandth of a second is pretty much your go-to start point. Don't go below. Having said that, you get away with about 1 800th of a second, 1 640th of a second, even 1 500th of a second. But I would tell you the lower you go, the more motion blur you're gonna pick up. So even at 1 1000th, you're gonna pick up a little bit here and there, but it's not nearly similar to say 1 500th of a second. So if at all possible, go with 1 1000th of a second. I mentioned earlier, f-stops really need lenses that can get down to f2.8. If it'll go lower than that, terrific, but f2.8. If you got anything that's higher than that, you're just gonna run into problems with really super high ISOs. Speaking of ISOs, it's really based on the conditions you're in. And these kind of gymnasiums, I'll shoot like one one thousandth of a second, set it manually, f2.8, set manually, and then ISO may vary based on the situation. If I've got a, a, a gymnasium that's lit well from end to end, uh, the entire court is lit exactly the same, I'll just take a reading, figure out what the ISO, set it and forget it, don't change it. If you're in a gymnasium that's got really poor lighting, sometimes you'll see that on either end, you might wanna set it on auto ISO. As far as things like white balance, I usually go with auto white balance. Frankly, it works pretty darn good. You know, you can measure it, you can change it, you can use some of the other settings as far as adjusting your white balance, and I've talked about it in this video right here. But in the end, if, if auto white balance works for you, you've taken a few shots, you look at them, and they're working good for you, stick with it. And finally, I might suggest you use something they call anti-flicker. There's been some bit debate, especially in my comment section about anti-flicker. I suggest you use it. I've never had a problem with it. Some people say, well, hey, it, it holds up your camera, it causes it to stutter. And it only does that when it's actually working. So I put it on my camera and I leave it on and I 
never take it off because I don't even want to think about it. So I highly recommend anti-flicker because you're going to get you're going to get some gems in some weird lighting situations where if you don't have the anti-flicker on, you're going to get all of a sudden one frame is going to be kind of dark and a different color than the rest of the frames. That's what the anti-flicker fixes. All right, now let's talk some strategy and positioning. Follow me to my office. Okay, so let's talk about how the game is played and where to position yourself based on how the game is played. So let's say we have our court. And there's a net down the center. On each side, there are six players. On one side, one player will be serving the ball. The goal is to get the ball over this net. The opponent's side, they return the ball. Each side has three touches on the ball to get it across the net. And it switches back and forth based on who has the ball at the time. Also, you'll see, at least in the uh, high school level, there'll be a scorekeeper's table, and there will be a judge right here, or a referee, and another one up here. Now, this one was actually up on a stand that they actually climb up on. The player benches are over here on either side, generally. And then the audience would be back here. Again, this is the normal setup that I see. Sometimes you'll also have audience back here. So the team that has the ball serves the ball over and into this side. Generally, generally, not always, it will go to these rear three players. And mm, about 50% of the time, it'll go to this player right here. Not all the time, sometimes it's one of the others, but it's a safe bet that if you want to focus on somebody on the defense side, this is the person to, def to focus on. Now what they're gonna do is they're actually going to what they call pass the ball. So they're gonna try to bump the ball up into the air and one of these three players are gonna do what they call a set. So we did a pass and this player over here is going to try to set the ball. And then one of these other players is going to spike or hit the ball across the way. So they're gonna try to hit it over here and they try to fake where they're gonna do it and who's gonna actually hit the ball to fool the opponent's opposing side. Therein lies the difficulty of figuring out who is gonna hit the ball when. Now, where do you set up to photograph this game? So I think there's a couple options from where you can photograph this game from. I like to stand, sometimes I will stand right behind the score table here so I can photograph going this direction or I can go in this direction depending on how it's going. And I will actually shift back and forth depending on where the ball is going. The problem with this is you're behind where the players are sitting so you get zero reactions from them. However, the positive is you're not dealing with this ladder stand that this particular ref is standing on which gets in the way of actions at, at the net. An alternative is to be up in the stands. So I mentioned earlier, I like to use my 300 or a 400 and shoot down. You could do that too. So you play action here, shooting down toward them or the server. You could do that from the stands if you have a longer lens. Some alternatives to what I just described is over here on the other side with these stands, I will shift back and forth on opposite sides of this referee and their ladder to do action on either side, depending on who I'm trying to focus on at the time, who's receiving the ball. Basically, I'll shoot the server, and then I'll try to focus on the actions over here because that's the next people who are gonna to want to touch the ball. Going that way, going that way. Some alternatives are, again, with a longer telephoto lens, you could sit over here and go in this direction. That way you can get actions at the net, um, sometimes you can get them, if you're down low enough, you can actually get them below the net. But I will tell you, this net is a pain. It will throw off your autofocus. Unless you have something, some really good eye autofocus system. Same thing on this side, shooting that direction. All right, so here we have our court. And let's assume you're going to photograph warm-ups. This is how I like to photograph warm-ups. So initially, what I have seen with players is they'll, on either side, they'll be, you know, kind of hitting it back and forth toward each other a little bit for a few minutes. 
And then at a set time, one team or the other will kind of take over the court. And then they'll swap later, but they take over the court. And what they're doing is they're practicing hitting it over. So they're, they're gonna practice their serves, uh, they're gonna practice their spikes, and the spikes are right along here or on this side, and they'll switch back and forth. These are all the practice things. So how do you get some good action while they're doing that? So the way I like to photograph warm-ups is I like to be up here, right up on that uh, referee stand where they climb up on the ladder. And you're saying to yourself, well, I can't do that. Well, why don't you ask? So every time I have asked a referee if I could photograph from that stand, they have said yes. In fact, they usually say, oh, and make sure you get my good side. So I would highly recommend at least asking to shoot from that stand. It is a perfect vantage point to be photographing down, see the players, get their faces while they're doing their warm-ups. It also gives you some unusual angles when they're, they're practicing, they're spiking the ball going in either direction that you don't normally get it from any other location around this court. So I highly recommend ask if you could shoot from that location. All right, folks, that's how I like to shoot volleyball. If you're an experienced volleyball shooter and you've got some other tools or techniques or ways you like to do it, put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And while you're here, check out a couple of my other videos and subscribe. All right, I'll see you next time.